Is Mike Dunleavy Jr., the new general manager of the club, now uh, two months into the job and being faced with questions about future extensions. This is on with Dubs Talk podcast with uh, Monty Poole and Dalton Johnson on NBC Sports Bay Area. Yeah, I mean, those are... Those are guys we definitely want to get locked up moving forward. Uh, been a big part of what we've done here, and um, I think they can still contribute, especially Clay on the court and Steve, um, you know, one of the best, if not the best coach in the league. So high priority level in terms of getting those guys done, you know, we'll see. I mean, obviously there's always a financial component and guys want to be here and all that, but, you know, we, we greatly value them and hope we can work things out. Greatly value him. Hopefully things will work out. I didn't sense a lot of urgency there, but, and I got to ask you, and I'll ask all the audience, 888 how urgent is it to get Clay and or Steve Kerr signed before the start of the year to avoid distraction? But those are two guys that maybe, the question is who would be a bigger distraction? That's where I would start. Because they're both two guys that they're not going to huff and puff and you don't have to worry about them. Draymond kind of, you know, like you said, Draymond had the escape valve because he had the player option. Clay doesn't have that. Clay, no, we all know that Clay wants to be better this year. So I don't want Clay pressing. But I'm also not going to overpay Clay. And this goes to the question of if you go to Clay, when we talk about two years, 60 mil. Dibs, would you call that the hometown discount? I think that's about what the market will bear, honestly. Yeah. I don't know if that's a hometown discount. I didn't think it was necessarily either. It's just he was make, he, he was just making a lot of money, and I'm not going to use the O word and say he was overpaid, right, for, for what he did these last couple years. But I don't necessarily think he would be underpaid at 30 mil. So then what happens if – and and – Evan was talking about it a little bit as well. Then what happens if you come to him with 30 mil and he says, I'm not going for it. And now you have, now that creates a distraction. I think if you offer, if you offer, an, if you don't offer an extension, no distraction. Hey, we're just going to see how it plays out. It's a business. If you offer something that he deems disrespectful and he turns it down and now wants to show you and prove to you that he can play at a higher level and deserves more money that could be a distraction because then every time he has a, a game where it, it just doesn't make sense and he's shooting the ball all over the place, then you start to think, all right, is this because of the extension situation? Now it's going to be on everybody's mind. But if right. you don't offer him, I don't I don't think he can, because of the cap situation and how awful it is for the Warriors, I don't think that would be a distraction. If you offer him something that he doesn't like, that could be. It could be, but ultimately if you sign your contract – You've agreed to play for that going forward. So right. you can't sign a contract and then complain about it. Mm -hmm. And I've never thought that in terms of any aspect of life where, you know, you want more money and then you get offered a contract and you sign it and that's it. As soon as you sign the contract, right. for you to then complain about the fact that you're underpaid, well, you signed the contract. You didn't have to sign that. So now you're right. you're on the hook for whatever you agreed to. But but I'm saying they come to Clay and he says I don't know. I I don't want that. Right? I'm saying they can't agree on an extension before the season and now he wants to prove to the Warriors and whoever, "Hey, you're offering me 30 mil. I think I'm worth 36 mil a year or wh whatever the case is. I think that could be a distraction." So the Warriors have to be very careful if they are going to offer him that you're pretty sure it's going to be a done deal. And you would think that they're going to talk with the agent and really get a, a feel right. for it. Cause I was going to, I was going to say something, Dibs. We have this saying and clay, he's jumping off rocks into the water in Greece. He's on his boat. Steve Kerr, same idea. Steve Kerr, very open about how he feels about certain things. And it doesn't seem like they're guys that are worried about money, right? That's what you'd say. But then when it's time to get paid, right. and then when it's time to compare yourself to other guys in the league, whether it's a coach or a player, that's when you really see who, oh, I'm not driven by money. You could not be driven by money, but still think, well, I'm not driven by money, but you still deserve to pay me this. Yeah. So this idea that Clay, he's just he's just hanging out, and it's Clay, he's going to sign for $15 million a year, that's not realistic either. Right, but that comes down to just ego and... Right. You know, that depends on the player or the individual. And in this case, you know, Steve Kerr 
Is Steve Kerr going to sit there from an ego standpoint and say, well, I need to get more than money because I've won more titles than money. I need to get Popovich money, plus maybe a little bit more. He's my mentor, but I need to make more than Pop Mm -hmm. or or else I'm going to walk. He doesn't strike me as that guy. And Clay Thompson, I don't think that he's looking at it in terms of, look, I'm 12th in in the league in payroll or whatever he's going to be going into this year with the new deals that are being signed. I don't think that Clay is going to say, I need to be top 10 or else. And also, remember, Clay Thompson got paid for two years yeah. where he didn't play. Yeah. So for me, it becomes a little bit of a reflection on Clay's legacy mm-hmm. if he decides to play hard, hard ball. Now, it doesn't mean you have to take an absolute hometown discount and play for the veteran minimum because you feel like you owe it to Lakeup and the team. Mm-hmm. That's nonsense. But I don't think that Clay is very well served by like drawing a line in the sand and saying, well, I, I need to make at least 40 because I'm worth that or else. And I don't see him doing that. Here, here's some of the numbers, Dibs, and obviously not everything is not everything is the same, but to, to give it context, but just say, here, here are some of the numbers. If you're talking about two years, 30, 30 mil, just talk about other guys that are in the range of making 30 mil a year. Julius Randle is making 29.2. Gordon Hayward is making 30 mil exact. That's probably a bad contract. Tyler Hero, 30 mil exact. Chris Paul, 30 mil exact. Then you go up a little bit. Chris Middleton, 31 mil. Jamal Murray, 31 mil. Brandon Ingram, 31 mil. So to your point, those guys that we named off in that 30 mil category, that feels that feels fair to me if you're Klay Thompson. I don't think you need to drop any lower than that, right? We know Andrew Wiggins. That's a very team. That's a very much a team friendly deal for Andrew Wiggins. Yeah. So I, I think the guys that you also named off at that thirty mil, and obviously all things aren't the same based on years and things like that. That feels right to me. Feels right to me. Any higher, you'd be like, eh. Any yeah. lower, you'd be like, oh. well, again, it comes down to what the team's going to be able to shoulder going forward because right. Joe Lacob wants to get below that second apron of the luxury tax threshold. If yeah. you're still in the second apron uh, in repeat years under the new CBA, you start to lose draft picks in future years. I think it's 29-30, 2029-2030. You lose your first-round pick, or your first-round pick Man. actually shuffles all, all the way to the bottom of the round, no matter what, if you are a repeat offender over that second apron. That's Mike, hardcore. No, it's especially That's if hardcore. you're looking to think about life after Steph and Clay. Yeah. And Draymond. So, you know, at that point, you've got Kaminga, hopefully, who's 25. Mm -hmm. And you've got Moody at 25, 26. And you've got, you know, Pojimski. And you've got, you know, Jackson Davis or whoever you have. You've got a young core of guys. And you're going to want draft picks to continue to move this thing forward into the future. This is Mike Dunleavy Jr. on the Dubs Talk podcast with Monty Poole and Dalton Johnson on NBC Sports Bay Area talking about optimism with these contracts yeah i don't give a whole lot in terms of what goes on in between the uh the walls of the center but we've had good conversations and um, i think we'll continue to do that optimistic that we can work things out with both, both those guys yeah optimistic that they'll work things out with both those guys steve kerr and clay thompson no sense about the the timeline of those things being worked out but Unlike the NFL, I don't think that there's a hard deadline where this has to be done or you can't negotiate until the next year. Right, right. So again, he said himself, I'm not going to give you guys too much because why would I do that? Right. But not not overly worried. And I don't think anybody is. I do think going back to the conversation of, okay, do I have to show that I, you know, I, I'm the, the big man on campus and I get paid this amount of money? It doesn't seem like that's Clay. He doesn't want to be disrespected, but we understand. He he knows he's so grateful, and he said that after he said that when he came back after I think when the Warriors won in 2022, he was very grateful to the organization for how they treated him during those injuries. So it's not a matter of all right, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours, but also hey, I get it. We're also in a, a a specific position, and that's why it's not disrespectful. That's why I don't think that Clay is going to look at whatever they, he knows that they're going to operate in good faith, and I don't think he's going to look at any contract extension offer that 
the Warriors come to him with as disrespectful because he understands the situation. If this was Detroit or your favorite team, the Magic, Thank that you. came to him with 30 <laughs> mil, you. that's different than the Warriors who are strapped for cash in the CBA situation. That's di- And the luxury tax, that's different than if a team who hasn't really done anything and doesn't have that contract situation, hey, Clay, we're going to give you 30 mil. All 30 mils are not created equal, Dibs. True, but the 30 mil here becomes a little bit of a a little bit of an albatross in terms of signing other players. So let's yeah. just assume that Chris Paul moves on about his business after this year sure. and Clay signs for $30 million. Well, does that $30 million bring you down far enough to where you're below that second-level apron for the luxury tax and gives you a little bit of room to still improve the team going forward? Because if you're going to keep Steph, which you are, and Draymond, he signed, and Wiggins, who's inked longer than any of these guys, and you want to keep Clay and Kaminga has a player, or I'm sorry, a team option next year, and then you got to start paying Kaminga. So what are we doing roster wise for the next, not this year, but the next two years after that, when Steph is going to be making up to 61 million? So yeah, Clay, Clay deserves to get every penny he can get, but all the money that he might command would eventually take away from being able to help them get a player to help them win a chip. Right. And now you start thinking about the the timing of everything. If when, you know, Clay gets signed and where Andrew Wiggins is at in his deal, now the question is, okay, there's no it's just always time to pay somebody. That's the thing. When you right. draft well, it's always time to pay somebody. And okay, let's say Kaminga takes that leap and now you're looking at Wiggins thinking it's a good deal, but Kaminga might be our guy. Maybe we move off of Wiggins. What if you move off of Wiggins, and by the time you move off of Wiggins, now you got to pay Kaminga anyway? So it's just this circle of money that's just going to keep getting spent over and over again. The beauty of it, though, is that uh, Joe Lacob has never been one to present himself as somebody who wants to go on the cheap. Mm -hmm. And you can look at the Jordan Poole move, and you could say, well, Jordan Poole, they traded him because they didn't want to pay him Mm -hmm. over the long term. That could be true. And it's also, I think, accurate that they brought in Chris Paul because they thought that he could help them more now than Jordan Poole could in this upcoming year so that you get a veteran for this year and you also save money down the road. For Joe Lacob, that's a a win-win. But I don't think that Joe Lacob has ever presented himself as somebody who has shied away from spending the money necessary to win titles. Right. But with Clay coming off the season he just came off of, you, you might want to lock him down here because what if, I mean, I don't think Clay would walk. What happens if they don't sign Clay to an extension and contract Clay, heat check Clay <laughs> is actually good? I like that. Let's say he balls out. Let's say he, t- he turns the clock back, he shows Charles Bar- Barkley that he's full of it, and he's, he's an all star. And you didn't sign Clay. Let's just say it happens. I don't know if it's going to happen. And now. That respect changes because now Clay has shown I am back and I can be that player. And there will be other teams that are legitimately after Clay. Now the Warriors are really in a pickle. So, I, and I don't want to be disrespectful to Clay. Right. I don't know the chances of that happening, but it's a chance. It's 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 a different situation to Jordan Poole, but it's also a chance. All the Warriors willing to take that chance, and Clay balls out, and now you put Clay in a pickle because Clay, you know what we can offer. Regardless of the, that's the thing, they're basically capped. So Clay, whether you're an all star or whether you have another rough season, right, or a rough first, whatever you want to call it, yeah, the numbers aren't going to be very much different. So really, this is your call. We can't we can't offer you forty two mil a year, even if you play like that this coming season, and you know we can't. So right, what do we talk? What do we want to do here? Well, can anybody else or will anybody else offer? Clay Thompson at uh, that age, and I think he'll be 34 right. by the time next year rolls around. Yeah, he's 33 and a it's half. He's not going right to be 42. Now. Right. Yeah. So let's just say, and I was asking the guys uh, when you were out uh, about what kind of a year he had last year. Like, where would you value that? And I think it was Steiny Guru and Mark Willard. They all put Clay's year last year at about 30 to 35 million. Right. And you on, know, yeah, go he ahead. He shot 41% from three. He averaged uh, damn near 22 a game. Mm-hmm. Clay was, at the end of it, Clay was really solid. Mm-hmm. Now, he was terrible early, 
Then he was, oh my God, remarkably good. Then he was really quite fa- fantastic. And then he was god awful right. at the very end of it. But mm-hmm. if you look at his year in totality, we all agreed it's about a 30 to $35 million a year season that he had. So if he has that same year this year, then does he want to sign for 35 somewhere else? Or sign for 30 here and remain a Splash Brother and a Forever Warrior? That's the question that's going to come. That's the question. And it, it is hard to do because I see people on the Xfinity Mobile text line, the 415. Styles, are you joking putting Clay in the same category as Murray, Middle, Middleton, and Hero? It, it also depends on the amount of years. We get all that. Because, I mean, on its face, yeah. Michael Porter Jr. at 35 mil a year. Then it then it's a matter of age and things like that. I, I don't know. That's why I asked you earlier if thirty would you count that as a hometown discount? It's the lower end of his range, but I don't know that that's a hometown discount. It feels like I mean it, again if if he can get thirty five elsewhere, if he gets two years and seventy as an offer from the Lakers, and let's just say the Lakers because it feels like. The Clippers, the Lakers would be the places that he would go. I also mm-hmm. thought that Portland might be a destination, yeah. him having spent time up there as a youth. But if it's two and seventy elsewhere or two and sixty two to stay here with the Warriors, it is a hometown discount. Yes. But we're still talking about thirty plus million a year. And this is something that Mark Willard has mentioned, and I agree with him in terms of value on the back end. If Clay Thompson is a 14-year Golden State Warrior and he's only a Warrior and Draymond's only a Warrior and Steph is only a Warrior, Steph's a little bit different because he's in another stratosphere. But Mm -hmm. guys like Kavon and Draymond and, you know, Clay Thompson, if you have your whole career with the Warriors, that gives you a certain amount of value on the back end in terms of being a forever Warrior.